Okay, there we go. Okay, hello and welcome to the International Sea Scout Scuttlebutt event. Webster's Dictionary defines scuttlebutt as a cask on board to contain fresh water for a day's use. Further down in the definition, it says the term for the water source was also applied to, to the gossip and rumors generated around it, and the latest chatter has been called scuttlebutt ever since. Sea Scout leaders from all over the world are gathering today to mark the 100th anniversary of the passing of Sea Scouting's founder, Henry Warrington Smythe Baden-Powell, known to his family as Warrington. We're also taking this opportunity to share some Sea Scouting program and event ideas, as well as simply getting caught up with distant friends whom we only get to see once in a great while. My name is Bruce Johnson, and I'm a member of the National Sea Scout Committee of Sea Scouts BSA, and I'll be your host for today's meeting. Let me cover a few housekeeping rules before we proceed. This meeting is scheduled to last just under an hour. During the meeting, I'd like to ask you to please mute your microphones so that we're only hearing one person at a time. If you have a question or comment, please type it in the chat box at the bottom of the screen. Holly is uh, monitoring that. During the meeting, unless you are the presenter, please turn off your video camera this will help our shipmates whose internet connection may be unable to handle many video feeds at once. At the end of the meeting, we'll have a round robin introduction of the event participants and we'll leave open the Zoom connection for at least 30 minutes so people have a chance to say hello to one another. Many of the files from today's event will be available to download. A web address will be shared at the end of the meeting Thank you for attending, and let's begin with an opening provided by 8th Fife Scouts in St. Andrews, Scotland. In my honor, I promise that I will do my best to do my duty to God and the Queen, to help other people, and to keep the Scout law. It's my pleasure now to introduce my friend Ron Bird, who's been active in Sea Scouts for many more years than some of us have been alive. Although he's lived for many years in New Zealand, he actively promotes Sea Scouting across the Asia Pacific region. Ron will kick off our memorial for Warrington Baden Powell. Ron, uh, unmute yourself. Hi, is that better? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank Bruce for the help he's given us. He's been serving for the last three or four weeks, which is, this thing has really expanded on. <clears throat> well, first of all, the history about Warrington. Um, Warrington was born in February uh, 1847 and died in 1921, as we've said already. And my interest in the, uh, in the history side of things with Warrington is the fact that he married a lady from New Zealand. How that happened, I've no idea. But if you don't believe me, there's a record from the New Zealand records of uh, people's birth, deaths and marriages. Um, how they came to meet, I've no idea, but they were secretly engaged for over 20 years. And it's only when Warrington's father died and his mother asked him to help out with her family that he actually decided to say, well, I'm going to get married shortly. Who to? A well, lady I've been engaged to for over 20 years. How they first met, I have no idea. But anyway, Warrington was a very clever person when he came to uh, fulfill his life. He was a master mariner, canoeist, and admiralty lawyer. Uh, he was the oldest one of the family. Um, Robert was the younger one. And there was, uh, he was a fellow of the Royal Geographical Society. He also had membership of the Shipwrights Company, the Yacht Racing Association. So he's involved with lots of things. 
Um, he died in Chelsea in London. And he, of course, he was he's, uh, sent to be buried up in St Andrews. For those of you who are interested, let's get the copy. Some of you may have seen this. It's a history of sea scan written by my friend Roy Massini. I was hoping to be here today, but unfortunately I can't contact him. But it's all in there. It's for me or reading. There's many, many folders we've created on uh, Warrington. But he, uh, as I say, he was uh, a very intelligent fellow and very highly thought of when he went to the uh, Naval College to do his learning seamanship and things. There was uh, various reports about his uh, goings on. <laughs> so there's one that. But uh, one of the things that uh, Bruce and I have been talking about is that both, the, both Robert and Warrington married late in life, with young people younger than him. So, uh, yeah, so a bit of a but if you do want more history, I've got stuff here I can let you have, but it goes on quite a bit, so I'm not prepared to go on with that today. Okay, thank you, Lewis. Okay, thank you, Ron. I'm just going to quickly go through a few other items that would, would probably interest yeah. people. These are um, the two books that he wrote, Canoe Traveling and Sea Scouting and Seamanship for Boys. Here are some examples of his drawings. As you probably remember, Robert Baden-Powell was also an avid sketcher. So these are examples of Warrington's work. Here's the Baden-Powell family, and Warrington is the gentleman seated in the front row on the right. Here he is in his full dress uniform as a lieutenant in the Royal Navy Reserve. And the photograph that Ron was alluding to earlier is this one here with his lovely bride on, on his wedding day. And then a number of you who are in this meeting had Lots, lots to do with the creation and inauguration of this monument for Warrington Baden-Powell at Gilwell. Uh, and this, these are photographs from that occasion. There's Ron in the middle, and uh, there are a number of other uh, usual suspects uh, in these photographs as well. I see Kevin in the uh, lower left photograph. And of course, uh, Ron Brown uh, from, uh, from uh, Denmark is in the upper right. This flag, by the way, is available from Ron for any uh, anniversary Sea Scout events. And Ron would be happy to uh, loan it to you for the event. By this point, the, the flag has many, many patches on it to commemorate it, those activities. There's a cutting there, Bruce. I've just got it up on the wall behind me here. I'll just lean out of the way. So as you say, it's taken a lot more badges on it now than what there was before. So that's the only requirement is to make sure you put your ship number, badge number, whatever, on the on the uh, So it's developed. And by the way, if you look in the bottom corner of the flowers, you might see somebody you know. Here he is, right down the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, or Kiwi. So, yeah, that's, that's right, about the flag. All right, and uh, we return to St. Andrews, Scotland, where members of the 8th Fife Scouts are about to lay flowers on the grave site of Warrington Baden-Powell. As you'll be able to tell from the video, it's a very windy day in Scotland. I love the seagulls in the background. The 8th Fife Scouts uh, sent quite a few photographs and, as well as um, reprints of articles of other commemorative events uh, at the grave site. Um, that are available in the downloads area. I would encourage you to grab a copy. Um, 
I have to confess that this video was made yesterday morning um, and they got it to us yesterday evening and we really appreciate the effort that they made to to do this both to commemorate Warrington and to allow us to share with them in their uh, commemoration of Warrington Baden Powell's life. There's a close up of the uh, the uh, monument on his grave. Bruce, I'd like to also add that uh, I'd like to thank uh, David Roy for his work on getting the hate fight as well. It's now my pleasure to introduce Asa Gordon, who's head of Scout Adventures for the Scout Association in the United Kingdom. Good evening, folks. My name's Asa, uh, and I look after what we call Scout Adventures here in the UK, part of which uh, means I have the privilege of looking after Gilwell Park, uh, particularly the activity centre. So um, we just wanted to give you a bit of a uh, video of uh, the site and, and a little tour across the front of the White House to uh, give you a taste of what Gilwell looks like for those of you who haven't been and for those of you who've been here before um, to reassure you we're looking after it and it's all still standing and ready to welcome people back which we're very much looking forward to as we come out of this pandemic. So we'll take you for a little wander through the park uh, to uh, the statue and you can uh, get a bit of a feel for what it's like here. So here we are, uh, a lovely evening here at Gilwell as we walk across the front of the White House. And here in the UK, we're currently uh, in spring really, so we've kept our grounds as neat as we can, uh, albeit it's a shame people haven't been here to appreciate them this spring. Uh, here's the White House, looking very grand. I'm sure it's been the same for many of you. This last 12 months has been quite odd. Gilwell Park normally sees uh, tens of thousands of visitors a year. And instead, after we lost our 100 international volunteers last summer into the autumn as we sent everyone home, once it was clear the pandemic meant we wouldn't really be opening. Uh, the place has been quite quiet. We've probably got around 10 people resident here on site looking after it uh, with another sort of five or six that are local staff coming in every day. Our offices here are closed. It's also where we have our head office for UK scouting. Um, so it's been a very quiet estate. The wildlife are loving it. Um, and uh, it's uh, certainly not done the grounds any harm to not have all those thousands of people running around but we're very much looking forward to having people back here and we're starting to see local scout groups now come and use the center and here we have warrington baden powell's statue we've laid some flowers there to commemorate this hundred years since his passing hope you enjoy the rest of your evening catching up sharing stories about all your sea scouting adventures on this important anniversary. It's now my pleasure to introduce David Wright of the United Kingdom. David also serves as a member of the Odysseus Group, a steering committee that facilitates international sea scout cooperation throughout the European region. David will be speaking to us today about uh, both about the upcoming Eurosea conference, as well as an innovative project to help connect local Sea Scout groups for international Sea Scouting experiences. David, thank you, Bruce. Yes, as Bruce has said, uh, the Odysseus Group represents European Sea Scouting to the World Organization of Sea Scout movements. And we are also responsible for organizing the Eurosea event. This is an event that COVID willing normally takes place 
every two years. This is a conference for representatives of European Sea Scouting, although we have had representatives from outside of Europe also attending the event. Um, unfortunately, um, you will see on the heading there that uh, Eurosea 2021 uh, is, is advertised as being held in Greece. Uh, it was also earlier advertised as being in Greece in 2020. But as I'm sure most of you will understand, COVID restrictions have meant that we have had to push back Euro C once more. And so we are now looking forward to staging Euro C in Greece in 2022. Uh, the Greek Scout Association has accepted the task of running Euro C and currently we're putting the details together uh, although we expect the event to take place uh, in early September in 2022. Early September is normally the time of year that we would look to run the EuroC event. So if you want to follow developments as they happen, uh, if you just Google Sea Scouts Europe, um, it'll bring you to this site, or you can see the link there, cscouts.eu, uh, and that will bring you to the website for updates as we move forward. So could I have the next slide, please, Bruce? Um, and, and Bruce mentioned uh, uh, an exchange program. This was something that came out of the last EuroC event, EuroC 14. There was a real interest in how we can improve communication between Sea Scout groups in Europe. And I'm sure it's a similar problem elsewhere in the world. Um, not all national organizations register Sea Scouts as a separate entity within their overall numbers. So it can be difficult to identify uh, Sea Scout groups. Uh, and we had this demand um, for improved communication. So we've set up this Sea Scout exchange program. So on this page on the website, and I have to speak thank Jan, who's going to be talking about sea scouting, landlocked sea scouting later for the technical work behind setting off up this page. But we have now set up this page so that if you have an activity that you would like to share with sea scouts elsewhere in Europe, you can advertise it by by going through the links on this page. And likewise, if you're looking for Sea Scouts in Europe to make contact with, again, there are links on this page so you can put what you're looking for, what activities, where you're looking to, to, to link up with people. And, and we're hoping that this is going to be uh, a really useful platform for bringing Sea Scouts in Europe together. It has to be said, unfortunately, we launched it at the beginning of COVID restrictions. Uh, and so unsurprisingly, we've had, we haven't had a great deal of take up yet, but we're certainly looking forward to pushing this uh, in the future and hoping that it provides a really useful platform for sea scouting in Europe and perhaps produces a model for sea scouting in other regions. So uh, thank you, Bruce, and I'll pass back to you. Thanks so much, David. Our next presenter is Jan Merkos of the Czech Sea Scouts. 
The Czech Republic lacks a coastline uh, on a large body of water, but it more than makes up for it for many beautiful streams, rivers, and lakes that are perfect for sea scouting. Holly and I had the pleasure of participating in Eurosea in Pilsen a few years ago, and we had a great day of canoeing down the river, and it was a lovely experience. Sea scouting is very strong in the Czech Republic, and Jan is going to tell us about it. Jan? Yes, hello. Thank you for the introduction. So I just want to tell you a short thing about the landlocked or freshwater sea scouting in Czech Republic. So for the country of our size, I think our sea scouting organization is reasonably sized. So we have three thousand over three thousand youth members and over fifteen hundred uh, leaders and adult members. And there are two large events that you can participate in as a visitor for sure. And I'll talk about them in the following slide. And also, we have okay. Thanks. Okay, so <laughs> this is the slide. I want, to, but I want to talk about the boats. So behind, oh no, okay, you can go to the next. You can go to the next okay. slide. Right? <laughs> Sorry. So behind me, you can see the P fifty five hundred fifty. It's a boat that the uh, Sea Scouts built. It's like designed for our needs. So you can rig it up for sailing. And, or you can go down the river on it. And one of the large events is a competition in Prague, which is held every September. And what's interesting about this boat is that many troops build it themselves. So you can borrow uh, a frame from the, uh, from the organization and then just lay layers of fiberglass to build it and then, make, then you can use it. But the main focus of most troops is navigating rivers. And another interesting thing is that the Sea Scouts, like the leaders meet twice a year usually. So there's a lot of connection between the different troops. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, and apart from the large competition I was talking about, we have this Sea Scout Jamboree, which is happening every three years. And the next one is supposed to happen this year, but it will happen next year actually. And we are all invited to join us for this event. Usually, it's okay. It usually is very much fun. So you will be missing out if you don't come. And uh, it's a themed meeting, aimed mostly at the scouts' age, so from uh, eleven till eighteen. And uh, the theme next year will be. Uh, Augustin Hermann, which was a sailor, a Czech sailor who actually sailed at sea and he was an explorer in the 17th century. Okay, next slide, please. And that's it. <laughs> you can, uh, so if you want to join us for Navigamos, you can find the link in the slides, which I think Bruce will share later, I guess. Uh, or I will post the slide into the chat, uh, or you can also join some of the troops for an expedition. So that you saw the website that David was promoting. I already know about some troops that are interested in doing something like that. My own troop did that, did that when I was a kid. We went uh, down a river with Austrian scouts and it was a lot of fun. So I can recommend that if you have a scouts that you want to do something like that with. And the last thing that's happening every year, that's the competition where you go over the three years in Prague. And uh, that might be perfect to combine that with the visit of the city next year. So take your pick. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, thanks, so, thanks so much, Jan. Uh, the Czechs have a terrific uh, organization and they're lots of fun to work with. Our next pre presenter is Mike Philbrook of the Boy Scouts of America. Mike serves as chair of the William I. Koch International Sea Scout Cup, which is open to Sea Scouts all over the world. 
Mike, we look forward to hearing about the Coke Cup, what it is, <laughs> and the plans for the next Coke Cup regatta. And I'm hoping. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Bruce. Is. Yep, I'm here. Basically, the reason uh, I'm not in full scout uniform, I'm actually down at uh, our council owned boat and we're doing some deck work. So I'm taking a break from having to chip paint to uh, join you all here today. As Bruce said, my name is Mike Philbrook, and I'm the chairman of the William I. Coke International Sea Scout Cup. And probably more importantly, the president of the William I. Coke International Sea Scout Cup Association, Inc. And basically, that is the organization that sponsors or puts on the Coke Cup. So the Coke Cup is an uh, international sailor regatta that provides competition between U.S. Sea Scouts and international scouts. Uh, it's conducted every other year. It currently takes place on the even number of years. The first Coke Cup was held in Chicago, Illinois in 2002. The other Coke Cups have been held in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts, Miami, Florida, Annapolis, Maryland, New London, Connecticut, Vallejo, California, Long Beach, California twice. And the last one in 2018 was held in Galveston, Texas. The particip participation in the Coke Cup is by invitation only. Only participants who are Sea Scouts and members of scouting organizations recognized by the Boy Scouts of America and the World Organization of Scouting Movement, WASM, are allowed to participate. For countries that do not have Sea Scouts, any scout may attend as long as the scouting organization is recognized by WASM. In the past, we have, have had representatives from 16 different countries outside the United States. And I know a lot of the, these countries are represented on the call today. We've had Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Denmark, England, Finland, Germany, Hong Kong, Ireland, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, Portugal, South Africa, Sweden, and believe it or not, Trinidad and Tobago. The maximum number of international teams at a single Coke Cup has been 10. The goal of the William I. Coke International Sea Scout Cup is to have 20 teams from the United States and 20 international teams. In the United States, qualifiers are held and scouts earn an invitation to participate. I know several countries also have qualifiers to determine the team or teams to represent their country. Uh, I believe Brazil, New Zealand, and England all have some type of international national qualifier or national sailing regatta, and the winners of those events get the invitation to attend the Coke Cup. The next Coke Cup will be held in 440 days from today on July 10th to 16th, 2022, again in Galveston, Texas. We are looking for international teams to join us to sail, meet new friends and enjoy the adventure of the lifetime. International teams can express interest by completing an interest form on the Coke Cup website, www.cscoutcup.org or by mailing me at chairman at cscoutcup.org and that email address is also on the webpage. The registration fee for 2022 has not been set, but we're expecting it to be under $400. That fee covers food, lodging, cook cup apparel. Each participant does get a hat, a couple shirts, boat rentals, and returning in 2022, we're gonna have some type of fun-filled day in the local area. And we're looking at right now a trip to the Nassau Space Center. So the, as I mentioned, as the president of the William I. Cook International Sea Scout Cup, we're in the U.S., what we call a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. And uh, one of our main functions besides putting on the cup is to try and raise funds so we can offer scholarships to the international scouts to assist them in attending the events. In the past, we have been able to offer many of the international scouts a scholarship to cover one half the cost of their airfare to get to the event. So the Coke Cup itself, so Mr. Bill Coke, president of America's Cube Foundation, commissioned Ospreys of London, the silversmiths who made the original America's Cup trophy, to manufacture the William I. Coke International Sea Scout Cup. So with 40 scouts, what happens at the event, the first day is a practice day, second day is a qualifier day. So with the qualifier day, 20 of the teams are, then compete for the Coke Cup, and the other 20 teams compete for the Kiwi Cup. So the Kiwi Cup, it, it, like I said, in the, are, are the, the, the 
lower 20th fleet, but the Kiwi Cup was donated by the Sea Scouts of New Zealand in, in 2000 and is, is an authentic Maori carved statue that is presented to the winners of the Kiwi fleet. So we are looking for international scouts. If anybody does have an interest, they can contact me and I will be following up with everybody's on this call via email to see what we can do to get some more international scouts. Are there any questions about Cook Cup? If not, Bruce, that's what I have, unless uh, anybody has any questions. If we have any uh, come in later, uh, Mike, I'll forward them to you. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm also listening as, as we chip pay. Okay, thank you. Um, our, our final presenter is Barbara Delahunty, branch leader scouting for Scouts Western Australia. Barb has been very involved in international sea scouting for many years, having trekked to Europe and all over the Asia Pacific region. Barb will be presenting on two topics today. The first is sea scouting and the new Australia youth program. And the second is about the Swan About event held annually in Perth, Western Australia. Barb, thank you for getting up in the middle of the night and please take it away. Thanks, Bruce. Um, yes, we have a, an intriguing challenge with sea scouting um, in Australia, but I will speak from West Australian perspective in that we are, we've been running a very successful sailing and boating program for decades, but now we have to uh, meet a new challenge because the, the program is being opened up with a new program. Anyway, if you'd like to proceed us through to the new first slide, please, Bruce. Yes, the new youth program has um, uh, an outdoor adventure skills area, and it means that any scout, regardless of what sort of group they come from or what age they are, can choose um, adventurous pathway um, through different areas, and which includes, and boating is included in that. Next, please. So until um, just two years ago, uh, we were, Sea Scouts were part of the whole Scouts youth program. We're not a separate entity. It's just that we have separate uh, groups that are identified as Sea Scout groups, but we all wear the same uniform. We all use the same award scheme. But much of the uh, training and uh, uh, events and things that we were, where our young people were doing, weren't being very recognised in the standard awards scheme. Uh, but, so we could, uh, we often did well in camping and did all sorts of things like that, but um, we didn't get much recognition for the boating part of our program, uh, but we were the only scouts doing boating activities. With our new youth program, which is a complete rewrite, uh, there's a pathway through all a whole range of core pro, core areas and also ex, extra areas like adventurous activities um, that scouts can participate in at any age. So they can start as a joey and finish as a rover, but they can also um, step in and out of different stages of the program. So in this pathway under the outdoor adventure skills area, it means that all Australian scouts can now participate in boating activities and be recognised um, as sea scouts are, which is really fantastic. So in the last two years, the scout groups across Australia have been transitioning to the new program. Um, and any scout can choose any area of the outdoor adventure skills to work in, regardless of how old they are and what section they are. So that used to say things like joeys and cubs never do sailing. Well, a lot of the sailing programs start for juniors, five, six, seven-year-olds. So now we can include them in our program and uh, they can advance uh, through the scheme uh, to the level of their ability and they're not held back by their age or their section. Next slide, please. So Sea Scout groups still exist 
within the scouting population as we always have. But now we have scouts in non-sea scout groups. They can also take on sailing and boating um, and try all those adventures, which is just fantastic. It's not a closed, um, closed shop scenario. You know, there used to be a little sense of elitism where we were doing activities that other scouts couldn't do, but now they can. So it's absolutely awesome to have these opportunities made available to all scouts, but we have a problem. And that takes us to the next slide, please, Bruce. So approximately 10% of our scout groups in WA are sea scout groups, and approximately 10% of scouts in WA are sea scouts. But 100% of all the scout sailing vessels and nearly all the scout power boats are owned and maintained by sea scout groups. So people who think that we could run a super program and just invite all the other scouts along, but they don't appreciate the logistical difficulties because all the boats we run a program with now are owned and maintained by the groups and they're paid for by group um, fundraising and the group has pretty much full use of those boats. So we've gone from a small and effective Sea Scout Council of Sea Scout groups and we work together we were servicing approximately 500 Sea Scouts across those um, groups with the adults as well. But now we have to build a new boating council, um, which provides the same activities for approximately 5,000 Western Australian Scouts, uh, regardless of what kind of group they're with and all their leaders and their adult helpers. So it means we have to scale up our numbers of boats, facilities and instructor instructors by 10 times our current capacity, which is, you can, you can imagine, is a significant challenge. Next slide, please, Bruce. So I'm the branch leader for boating, and we wonder how am I going to build and lead a team of scouts and scouters to do this? And I will refer back to the uh, very excellent Kevin Costner movie, which where they said, if you build it, they will come. And we do find that with sea scouting, with sailing programs, they are very attractive to youth and adults alike. And I know that if we build a program and equipment and gather our leaders together to, to train, um, deliver training programs, we will have the other scouts will come and join us. Next slide, please. So the first thing we have to do is we need facilities because we can't get 5,000 non-sea scout scouts to um, come and flood the existing groups at their home base and their home halls. So I am in talks with local government um, and the state government to uh, develop three scout water activity centres um, to service our different regions around Perth. And it would be nice to be only having to deal with one facility at a time, but suddenly it's urgent that they all have to be dealt with right now. Then boats. So for our scout age and younger sailing crews, um, they work in dinghies, um, but our actual core program is using sea boats and I know a lot of groups around the world uh, use a very similar vessel uh, with a single mast, usually two banks of oars for rowing as an alternate form of propulsion. And we, want to, we need to build a fleet of those sea boats for our scouts to use because we can't go and impose on the group boats. And the other thing with uh, sea boats is they're not a common vessel out in the sailing public, so we have to... Uh, my goal at the moment is to uh, buy a suite, uh, a fleet of boats, um, fully built, new, matched, so that all the equipment is the same across all of the boats. And that's going to be a challenge and that'll require a major grant. For older um, scouts and venturers and rovers, they transition naturally to keel boats and the 
as they become more experienced, but also as they are bigger people, um, we don't need as many keelboats. And it's not a bad thing to have some variety in those boats to give um, older members a, a broader experience, technically. So we're basically trying to acquire them as much as we can um, from donations and from people who have outgrown their boat or want to share it with sea scouts. But also I need to find a way to purchase um, power boats to support the sailing program and also the other water activity um, areas that are now coming under boating, um, which are uh, like stand-up paddle boarding and scuba diving and canoeing, all the different things in the water activity zone. They were all things that would like to have power boats. So the first thing they say is, oh, you're going to buy a power boat. Oh, can we, have, can we borrow your boat when we're doing our activity? But I have to say to them, you have to come and pass our um, training program first before I let you take my boat away for the weekend. Um, the other third thing that we really need is the right kind of people because it, it doesn't just take people who love to sail or who love water activities. It takes people with the right kind of skill sets. Firstly, that they're actually uh, legitimate members of scouting and have done their um, work health and safety training and their child protection training, but also that they understand that young people who are learning to sail are going to make mistakes. And if you tell them to be in, in such a fierce way that, that they must be really, really careful and not do anything stupid, um, they'll be too afraid to explore. So we have to have boats that are simple for them to learn on initially and then that extend their skills and challenge them. But we have to know that learning by doing means we're all going to make mistakes, things will get broken, there has to be a maintenance program to support the boats. And, and that's our job. It's to make sure that they have um, a fun and safe environment in which they can learn from those mistakes and flourish with that. They, they need adventures. And that's the nice thing I like about sea scouting. It's better than yachting because you don't just learn how to sail faster and faster around a course. You learn all the logistics of uh, navigation, trip planning, um, uh, all the seamanship skills, wind, the tides, and the weather, and all those all those elements are involved. So it puts the scouting into sailing. Uh, if you'll just go to the next couple of slides, Bruce, or the next one. So this is an example of two of our boats that fit into the sea boat class, and they're not really like the classic clinker built. These are um, ones shaped, um, hull shape is like a clinker built boat, but they usually, that's got, uh, shows them equipped for rowing. This is during our Master Mariners competition, and they're showing out how nicely they can row. Um, the second boat is they're out sailing, and he's showing how well they can pick up a mooring line and make the boat fast and, and safe at the end of their sailing demonstration. So this is, this is a sea boat and this is good for patrols of young people. So this is a keel boat and we have some awesome cracking weather on the Swan River. Um, this is a scout crew on, on, a, on a Red Witch keel boat having a fantastic time. And this is where we need to have boats that extend the challenge. And the last shot, Bruce. We need power boats that can work in the river but also go out onto the ocean and are capable of towing and uh, anchoring and dealing with all sorts of weather out on the near ocean areas. But that's actually my elbow. We're driving back from an event where we just took boat, boat in tow so, to come in through the harbour. Our last image in the set is our venturers having fun um, with their boat anchored off Bather's Beach in Fremantle. The idea is you need to be able to have, have a great time as well as learning the skills, otherwise you won't keep them. And thank you. That's the end of that particular um, piece. So the other thing I wanted to share with you um, is an event that we've been running for about 50 years now 
um, called Swanabout. And it's called Swanabout because we're on the Swan River in Perth. And this is a Western Australian Sea Scout tradition. So pass, next slide, please, Bruce. So just to give those of you who may not know where Perth is, there's the expanded view. Perth's on the lower southwest coast of Australia, a very long way away from um, other countries. It was quite an eye-opener for me to come to um, Denmark and, uh, and Europe and see um, how close everything is to itself, each other. Um, and then on the, the expanded view, you see the Swan River um, area that we sail in in Swan about. And the, the course runs from the majority of the open water um, in the centre of the, of the screen, but all the way down really not right down nearly close to the mouth in Fremantle and through five bases. Next slide, please. So it's a 30 hour competitive sailing event. It's a marathon. And the challenge for youth of all ages is to keep the boat sailing through day and through the night and into the other day, into the next day. Go Saturday morning through to Sunday afternoon. And we get all sorts of different kinds of weather during that time. Um, and we've only just had the last one a few weeks ago. And the idea is not to have a crew sail the whole course, but, or not, sorry, not to have the crew, crew sail the whole 30 hours, but to keep the boats going so you change crews out so everyone gets to go. And then we get all these different kinds of boats from all the different groups going. Next slide, please. So there's some of our scouts in a sea boat. You can see it's a fairly old vessel. We like the old vessels and keeping them going quite. There are some boats that are still wooden in the fleet. Next slide. So the types of boats, we have small dinghies, um, paces, the six person sea boats that I've shown you catamarans and keel boats up to 30 foot long. Mostly they're uh, a bit smaller than that. Usually they're sort of 20, 22 foot um, length. Next slide. There's a, there's a Red Witch keel boat. This is the Red Witch is a class that's built in Western Australia specifically for our conditions. At, a, at low tide, it can sail out to the ocean from the river beneath all of the heights of the bridges on the way because its mast does not exceed, um, its mast is built so you don't have to actually drop the mast to get out underneath the bridges. It's a good little boat for uh, adventure ages. Next slide. So the challenge for coxswains is to decide when they're going to sail from their base, how far they're going to go. There are uh, three different courses they can sail. The long course, which goes around all five bases, uh, and there's a short course down the east end and a short course in the west end uh, for less experienced sailors. But the coxswain has to pick the right time to, to, to tackle each leg um, there are some very narrow sections through Blackwall Reach, for example, where that you can be sailing uh, with the wind behind you, but the tide coming against you and not making any progress at all. So we try to encourage them to choose the course they're going to sail um, and base that on their crew strengths, the type of boat, and, and all of the environmental factors that you will understand, which includes, in our case, sometimes extreme heat. Um, we have... Uh, up to, we, can, we can have up 40 degrees centigrade days in that time, or we can have storms. Okay. Next slide, please. Here they are having a, uh, some of them having a rather enthusiastic race. We, we pull out every kind of boat we can get on the water during this event. It's, it's fun to see some of the other things coming out that don't actually get much uh, water time in between. Next slide, please, Bruce. Now, the thing that makes this work 
really, really well. We have five bases around on the Swan River, as I mentioned before, and they're all Sea Scout halls that are based on the river. But the bases keep in touch by radio, and we're now on several different radio systems. But we've also built a program called Swan Track, and you can see a screenshot on the bottom left-hand area where if we, we put, we, we build these homemade GPSs out of old phones and attach them in weatherproof containers to each boat. And so we can see where they are on the river, but they're logged in and out of each base. And so we have a full crew listing for any boat and we have an estimated time of arrival um, at, it, at the next base, which is set by the coxswain when they leave. If they start to get overdue at that site, then we go. Then the program um, changes and the colour changes for their listing. And if they get seriously overdue, um, we can go out and look for them. But that that's uh, don't achieved by the base they're coming into. Each of the bases have designated rescue zones, and uh, we we all have always standby rescue boats, and we just go out and check and see where they are. In this way. They have a supervised activity, but they are given full freedom of making their own choice about when and where they're sailing and how they're going to get there. We keep an eye on them from a distance. Sometimes we can shadow them with an escort boat if we think they're still a little bit inexperienced about finding their way around some of the points. But it's this tremendous environment where for 30 hours, um, rosters of parents and leaders and uh, rovers and venturers run support bases for all the other Sea Scouts to sail around in. It's, it's just a tremendous experience. It's like the swallows and the Amazons and rather than um, a traditional yacht race. So we're very impressed with this particular program, which um, uh, Matt Hare has been working on and has been refining for a decade. So here they are out having some adventures so we just progressed the last couple of slides showing um, our scouts out in their different kinds of boats. There we go. That's all the, the sea boat class. You can see one up there. It's got a, um, a gaff rig, gaff rig, Bermuda rigs. We even have uh, one, the different kinds of boats, but the scout section doesn't use uh, spinnakers. And the next one. Yeah, so this year, for example, the whole circuit, if you start from your base and you do the whole long circuit, you would do 26 kilometres. So I have had my scout crews do two full circuits in the race um, to get 52 kilometre distances. And when it gets quiet at night, sometimes the scout boats do much better than the keel boats because they get out the oars and they row, and that's perfectly acceptable but the keelboats are not allowed to use their ancillary motor except for an emergency. So this year, the winning catamaran sailed 65 kilometres in the 30 hours. The winning seaboat sailed 81 kilometres. The winning keelboat sailed a cracking 146 kilometres, which is really good work. So that this is a tremendous volunteer collaborative effort. And to my mind, it's an exemplar of the best of, what scouting happen, can do when we get together as volunteers and create a great uh, event um, supporting our young people. And thanks, Bruce. That's the end of my presentation. I think, yes, yes. Yes. This is one of my favourite photos. Yeah. Go, go back to that photo. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Barb. I'm sure that uh, many Sea Scouts uh, who would love to join you in a visit, uh, would love to join you in a visit to sunny Western Australia. We'll be sharing, uh, uh, showing a slideshow of Sea Scouting around the world in a minute, but I wanted to share a web address with you and I believe Holly is gonna copy that into the chat box where you can copy it to your computer. Um, this, uh, if you want to go to this address on the screen, you can download many of the source files from today's meeting. We'll keep it up for a moment and then I'll ask, uh, yeah, I've already done that. Um, 
another way you can do this is just take a screenshot of the address. So once we've had uh, a chance for you to capture that, I will uh, stop sharing this one. And we have a slideshow of all the stuff that you guys sent in. So let me just stop sharing that. Close out that and Okay, so slideshow from the beginning. Okay, screen share, and we're going to this. Hopefully, I'm showing my screen now. And here we go.
thank you everyone for uh, the photographs you sent. There were so many great photos of, of your uh, scouts. Let me stop sharing this so everybody can see one another. Okay, um, that's all we had in the way of a program, but why don't you turn on your cameras and, and uh, we have time now that people can ask questions or just chat, go for it. I thought I'd introduce myself. I'm Sonia, uh, Sonia Brown from um, New Zealand. I was just interested in seeing Barb's um, presentation about boats and having to get boats. We've just been working on a, uh, a new production of our Sea Scout boats, the Cutter, uh, clinker built, but it's a uh, plastic rotor molded um, and it's available internationally. One's going off to Hong Kong soon and we're just getting our own ones um, out onto the water now. The Scouts have been robustly testing it um, so it has survived the last year um, with its testing. So I'll tell you what, they are the best to try it out. Uh, it is about a third cheaper than our current versions and it was really designed to take over the wooden hull because obviously they're taking a lot of production. So, yeah, um, something that we've definitely done a lot of work on and if anybody's sort of interested in that, um, I can put um, our details up. Ron um, has been very... Very much involved in this over the last ten or so years. Ron will confirm that, but it actually just, just happened, and and it's out there now, and uh, it's in production um, to try and keep costs down and easier maintenance. Your remarks, Sonia. Do you have uh, some content? Well, we can share your uh, email address if people want to follow up with you about that. Yes, Bruce, please. I can I'll actually put it down send on the you the, as well. I can send you the brochures because I've just uh, been in email conversations with um, Ron and the um, ah I've forgotten the name of the company now. Uh, Such the G. Yep, I do actually. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They're actually yeah. the cutters are actually what I'm going to try and get purchased a number of for WA. So we've got a quote. Um, ask for a quote to get um, a quantity shipped to Western Australia because it is the closest thing to our kind of a sea boat um, and by far the fastest and most efficient way of getting a fleet up and running brand new. We've still got a, um, a hull mould here uh, from previous jamborees where we've made our previous sea boats ourselves from it. Um, but then you've got to get back into the boat making business. And We've all got way, way too many things to do. Um, I, I really, really want, want to get um, four or maybe six cutters that, you know. They're, yeah, they're, 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 there's a number of colours. But, yeah. yeah, I've just had it at a regatta down in the South Island. We had it a couple of regattas last year before all the lockdowns happened. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but in between that, we've, we've done our fiddling. We've fixed a few issues and... And stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's definitely fully operational now, and, and and it was it was placing in every race, rowing, sailing, um, and it didn't matter sort of what crew was using it. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. No, they're going to be terrific. Mm. Mm. Uh, Bob, I'd like to uh, talk to you offline on email probably next yep. week. I'm very interested yep. in your new program. I had yep. some questions. But I'll keep those for you on the email. Uh, we've also just gone into a, a pretty new uh, program as well. And uh, it sounds like you've got a lot on your plate right now. It certainly oh, yeah. looks like you more than you can chew. <laughs> Wouldn't be bored for quids, mate. Yeah. And, well, and I'll, I'll give you some information on... Uh, an event that we have, which is quite similar to your Swan About. Uh, it goes over an entire weekend, and it's basically a rowing race where we drop our sea scouts at midnight in the middle of winter on a river, dark river, nothing about, and uh, they got to be back by Sunday whenever. So mm -hmm. it's certainly challenging and, and very character building. These yes. events yes. It's come off the water cruising at 10,000 metres. They are so stoked. It's it's unbelievable. So I'd like to share a couple of things about that with you. So that you'll be, be super. Yeah. Holly has reminded me that um, 
uh, I meant to give everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, so uh, can uh, I don't know that there's a, a good way to say who goes first, but uh, maybe we'll uh, let's let's start with uh, the people who haven't uh, presented here. So Alan, you're Alan Ford. You were you're next on my screen after David. Um, you want to say where you're from? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the National Coordinator for Water Activities for Scouts South Africa. We have two major sea scouting hubs. One is inland in the sort of Johannesburg area, and the other one down is in the Western Cape. <coughs> we have other nodes in Durban um, and very scattered Sea Scout troops in two other seaports, East London and Port Elizabeth. Our biggest challenge, of course, like anywhere, is, is funding and getting equipment. And COVID has really put us in the doldrums. We are slowly getting back into sea scouting and getting back into the um, training of the scouts. But one of our biggest challenges has been um, converting our adult leader training system over to online courses as well. And those guys have done an absolutely fantastic job in converting face-to-face -face training onto online training over the last year. So we all are looking forward to getting going again and getting some of our regattas going again and uh, getting back up to speed. Thank you, Alan. And that reminds me that um, our BSA's training is available online from my.scouting.org. And you don't have to be a member of BSA to register with it and take the training. And you will not, be, will not receive any marketing material from BSA. So that's another good thing about it. Uh, Dave Roy, you want to introduce yourself and you're muted by the way Dave hi yeah I'm up in Scotland which is north of England um, born <laughs> you might say born a sea scout but most of my adult working life I've been an agricultural scout but working in a boating center for to introduce boating and sea scouting to agricultural scouts. One thing I, I felt from the, the slideshow at the end was that it shows that sea scouting is much more of a youth activity and youth organization than so much more of our other scouts, which is in the UK, we are turning ourselves into a children's organization. I think we're losing our way instead of being a youth organization. Okay, thank you, Dave. Magda, I think you're next. And you're muted, by the way. Uh, what are you, don't re you don't really want to hear what we have to say on the loudspeaker, so that's why we mute ourselves. Okay. It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're from South Africa, I believe? Yes, we are. I'm from Richards Bay in KZN. Um, I did the Oars Charge in 2007. There was about 12 of us doing the training course. Um, and that course allows us to actually take the Cubs and Scouts onto the water. Uh, most of the Scouters that did the training with me has left. So it's only me left doing all the um, licensing for the uh, water activities. But at the currently, I don't feel comfortable enough to do it on my own. Um, and I'm currently busy doing the redoing the OS charge. Um, as our warrants uh, expires after five years. Um, so hopefully end of May, I'll be licensed again to take 
Cubs and Scouts onto the water. So looking forward to that. Thank you. Especially after seeing all the photos of all the yeah. wonderful activities taking place. Thank you. And and I am I'm Ronalda, but I'm visiting the north coast. We make this stays in Richards Bay. I'm actually from um, Durban, or actually Pine Town, which is not far from Durban. I'm a new BC scout. I was a um, I was a land scout. I'm actually the regional team coordinator for the Cub program in our region, which is KwaZulu Natal. And um, I've been helping with the development pack at the harbour, the Durban Harbour. So that's how I got to be involved in sea scouting. And um, I'm currently doing the oars license. Oars charge. The oars charge so that um, my cubbies can at least experience the water. And it's wonderful to meet all of you and to hear all the half eluting boating terms, which I'm sure I will get to learn about as I go along. So it's a pleasure to meet all of you. And, and you will be so much better person once you learn our language. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm worried about is I don't drown any cubs. That's my biggest problem. Right. Thank you very much. Shared, you're next on my screen. You'll need to unmute yourself. Good evening, all. Uh, yes, I, I miss a lot of, uh, of our Scandinavian friends. Uh, unfortunately, they are not here. Also, um, I'm the only Dutch person at the moment here. But um, I have to do the greetings from uh, Tone van der Werf. Uh, you all, some of you know him. Uh, his sister-in-law was the, the artist who made the, the sculpture, the bust of Warrington. And we still have the original casting of the, um, uh, of the bust. And uh, we like to donate uh, these castings to, the, to Ed uh, Baden-Powell. Um, forever, uh, that's the first uh, person we, we, we thought of. So you can make uh, many more of those busts if anyone wants to, uh, and 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 sell it for uh, for for good uh, for a good price, and then put it in the organization. It's only an idea that I, uh, I want to uh, uh, give to you. Um, so I will um, contact Ed uh, again. Uh, to find a place where we can uh, safely guard the the co original casting of the of the bust of uh, uh, of Warrington, and Thank I hope you. to see you uh, uh, sometime again in the, in a Zoom meeting. That would be great, Malcolm. You're the next one up on my screen. You'll need to unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Malcolm Mikkelsait. My scout name is Cobra. Yes, it's not exactly a sea scout name, but uh, I've been in scouting forever and a day. Um, I spent, what, 30, nearly 40 years in the land scouts. I got them right, and now I'm working on the sea scout <laughs> side. Don't, don't comment. <laughs> um, since, we, since I joined the sea scout stuff, I, I'm a troop scouter at Florida Lake Sea Scouts. Um, we are sea scouts, but we do haven't seen the sea for quite a while because we're all inland. But it's great fun. I love it when the kids will get out there. And uh, recently, yeah, COVID and all that, it's been great to see the kids getting back out there and wanting to take part. Uh, it's, 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 it's a pleasure. Um, quickly, my background, I was in the 1979 uh, World Scout Jamboree, which was cancelled. I was in America. 2019, I went back to America on the World Scout Jamboree. I was, I've also been to Japan, and my both my sons went to the 2007 World Jamboree in England, and my dad went to the 1957 World Jamboree in England. So, yes, we've got a little bit of scouting history by our, behind our name. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Uh, Kevin Rowan, you want to introduce yourself? to the two or three who may not know you. Kevin, do you hear us? 
Maybe not. Okay, he's going to stare at us. <laughs> All right, well, while he's staring at us, Derek Cogburn, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, uh, Bruce. Uh, and really, a uh, lot of thanks for organizing this event. This is my first international Sea Scout event, and I am blown away. Uh, seeing all the activity around the world, uh, all the youth having such good fun and going through so much good training is just uh, speaking to my heart. So I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, I'm the skipper of ship 1959, which is in Annapolis, Maryland, as Bruce said earlier. If you look over my shoulder at my background, that is our playground. Uh, this is the beautiful Chesapeake Bay, uh, one of the largest protected bodies of water uh, in the world. Uh, great for sailing. Uh, on the bay, uh, big boat sailing, uh, keel boat sailing is, is what we primarily focus on. Uh, we started uh, in our ship sailing on a 40 foot uh, keel boat, uh, getting lots of experience for our uh, scouts uh, anchoring and uh, racing and cruising. Uh, we uh, now have several smaller keel boats as well as several dinghy sailors. Uh, and we also have uh, uh, power boating. And one of the nice things about the Chesapeake Bay is in addition to the large open bodies of water, we have rivers and creeks. And so uh, on Back Creek, for example, which is where we're located at the Seafarers Yacht Club, we have kayaking uh, and paddle, paddle, stand up paddle boards on Back Creek. And so uh, I'm looking at Barb and um, where's my other friend? Uh, where did she go? She stepped out. Uh, you know, seeing what you guys are doing, we just, we really want to do more of that. And so we want to be uh, motivated by what we're seeing. And I'm looking forward to sharing with everyone. Thank you very much, Derek. Um, Kevin, do you have your ears on? Yes, it looks like he does. Can I you do, yeah. Hiya, Bruce. How are you? You want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Good, or good evening from uh, Ireland. Uh, my name is Kevin. And I just want to uh, share some things about Ireland, Sea Scout in Ireland, but also I'm joined tonight by my colleagues, Alex and Sarah from the southeast of Ireland. I'm just near Dublin. So Sea Scouting is quite strong in Ireland, not number wise, but quality wise, it's very strong. So what I mean by that is the groups that uh, we have here in Ireland, there are Sea Scout groups, not only do they have very large numbers, but also they have a very active uh, program and they're inclined to attract a new membership uh, quite a bit. And uh, they would always have nearly wait lists uh, for young people to join. That's very encouraging uh, and keep us going too as well. But we do offer a great program. So, for example, uh, my own group, uh, Malahide Sea Scouts, if you get a chance to look at our website, it's www.malahideseascouts.ie. Um, we have approximately 710 members, so we have a age group from six right through to rover age. Beaver age starts at six, and rover age is up to 26, and all sections are active. In other words, we're very lucky we don't have a fall off of that 13, 14-year-old age group where it gets very volatile. I know certainly in scout groups, they're inclined to lose them, but we have a not only our own uh, scouting uh, program, uh, what's called the One Program here uh, with Scout in Ireland. We also have our own Sea Scout program uh, and uh, that really keeps us going as well. So I'll say no more other than that. I hope you get a chance for my two colleagues to speak to you, Sarah uh, and Alex. So thank you very much. And Bruce, fantastic evening. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gopi, would you uh, please uh, introduce yourself? There we go. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Gopi Shetty, and I am National Commodore of Sea Scouts India. Uh, we are part of uh, Bharat Scouts, which is a national organization. Uh, but as far as sea scouting is concerned in India, uh, it is not doing so well. But I am trying my level best to bring it up to the standard what you all are doing. So today I have uh, able to learn so many things from various countries and so many activities you are doing. Really, it is appreciable. Here in India, uh, we are doing sea scouting since last 20 years. And the age group is around 12 to 14 years. And uh, we do mostly on every Sunday. And uh, during the school vacations, we are conducting various camps. 
like swimming camps, boating camps. Uh, we have got our seabird class pulling boats. We do kayaking, canoeing, sculling, and windsurfing also. And uh, recently, we have introduced uh, ham radio. Uh, that is radio scouting into our syllabus. I myself, I am ham radio operator. Uh, we owe to Juliet Golf Alpha is my call sign. And uh, really, I appreciate Bruce. You are you are really wonderful, brother. Uh, you have done such a good job that. Uh, you have given a platform where all sea scouts uh, around the world they are now together sharing their experiences telling about their countries so my suggestion is that uh, let us give a one more step ahead for this like we all should form an organization and association like we all should uh, follow one common syllabus common training program which will enable us like for uh, Uh, sea scouts india like small uh, sea scout organizations uh, where we will be able to learn from you all and we all can follow your footsteps and we'll try to develop the way you have developed sea scouts in your countries so thank you very much bruce all the best to everyone so it was really a nice program thank you very much i think what we could do because i know sea scouting is different in each country is we could make an effort to share what we have from our own countries our our youth are different from country to country and the kind of water we uh boat on is different from place to place uh but we could share those resources with everybody so that you take the good ideas from other places that you you really like uh let's see uh alex um you want to introduce yourself thanks bruce um my name is alex kelly and i'm from a sea scout group in rural ireland so kevin was being very modest earlier his group is probably the strongest group in ireland um and and set is kind of best practice we all see their group as best practice so well done kevin and kevin pays a, a large part in that um so sarah and i we have a lot of small sea scout groups around us and we organize events like camping on the water where we actually travel up the waterways by boat and we have lots of other groups join us as well and we have um competitions and joint camps um all year round so we're very active um and we've we we obviously during covid are missing all our activities so it's it's a bit sad <laughs> but we look forward to getting back on the water again um and we've had the privilege of going to Eurasy and we went to Nawaka there in 2018 um so it's just it's it's sad this time the uncertainty for planning cuz sea scout groups are all about planning checking the tide tables and planning ahead so um thank you very much Bruce for organizing all this it's been lovely thank you thank you thank you very much uh Dayong would you uh, like to introduce yourself please unmute There Hi Bruce uh I'm Dayong Wan from Scouts of China uh well Scouts of China in Taiwan uh so uh just uh just a few words about this event this is great it's my uh, first scout but event uh it's, it's fun i'm going to bring it to our our crews and uh uh 2023 two years from this year will be our 100 years in sea scout but believe it or not this year 2021 is our birthday again because we start 98 years ago but uh, up and down and we die many times so fortunately uh, scout association in taiwan decide to uh, uh reset to build the establish their new division c scout so we're really looking forward to uh, help from the c scouts around the world so uh, i i consent the uh, the idea that if we can uh get there uh, some kind of contact the uh, list or something so uh, i wish we could learn more from the, uh, all the experience thank you so much thank you and and i i will put the contact list or at least the inv- invitation list uh in that downloads okay. area there are two or three files that haven't been put there yet but we'll do that and if you if you weren't uh, invited directly by me first of all thank you very much for coming and uh if you would please uh email me uh or email holly uh, we'll add your name to the list so that uh we put you on the contact list uh dovio are you um 
are you there? I see your your photograph from Lithuania. I hope I haven't mispronounced your name. Okay. Uh, how about Luke from Belgium? Luke has his has there he is. Hi everybody. Yeah, because the connection is rather unstable, I have to put down my uh, video. So I'm um, Luke from Belgium. Um, since uh, a few years, I'm not more so active on the field, but that means that I still have a full time behind the curtains. You know, uh, since two years, we have a new legislation for sailing in Belgium, uh, which made this almost impossible to work on the water. So uh, little by little, we make some progress uh, uh, that we can go on with the work, the scouting work. Uh, for instance, you have to do your examination. I think in every country you have a kind of examination, but also a practical examination. Uh, and to get this organized, it's rather uh, difficult with our kind of boats, uh, because when they uh, directed this legislation, they were a little bit forgotten that there were small boats also, <laughs> and that there were some non-profit organizations. So I have to fight more against this uh, kind of things than, uh, the, than, than there were other problems. But uh, petit à petit, uh, we will arrive at uh, having an own testing center and maybe we can uh, deliver the own uh, sailing licenses, recognized sailing licenses for all Europe. So thank you all for... Uh, to have met you, because it was a long time that I have seen a lot of my brothers all over the world. And I hope that this uh, initiative can uh, take place again once. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you all. Th thank you, Luke. And you are a very, uh, very persistent guy, so I know that you're going to <laughs> succeed. Uh, Richard Hunt, you want to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Richard. I'm group leader for AC Scout Group in Surrey in the UK. So down in the south of the country, about as far away from David as I can possibly get, um, which is my ambition in life. It's been absolutely fascinating to see and hear everything. Um, yeah, and in particular, your three weirs race, having visited Prague a couple of years ago. Um, I now think I've got another tactic. Certainly, I know my daughters would quite like the idea of coming and going over your weirs. Um so no, Bruce, massive thanks for organizing it. Thank you. Uh, Julio, am I mispronouncing your name? No, no, it's very well pronounced. Julio Sumaeta is my name. I'm from Valparaiso, Chile. And, oh. uh, in, well, I must say that my scouting group is not a sea scouting group, it's a land scouting group but it has lasted for 110 years. We were founded in uh, 1910 here in Valparaiso. So it's a very uh, long lasting group. And we wanted to, since very long ago, to open our uh, CS activities. And in 2007, we went to the uh, uh, World Jamboree at the UK uh, with the delegation of my group. And then we met there uh, Ron Bird and Ron Bird paid us a visit on 2008 and promoted uh, strongly the uh, sea scouting and uh, so that was I was giving him special regards. Uh, we have had a, a very slow uh, uh, beginning with our uh, scouting activities. It's, since 2008, we have bought uh, three kayaks, those uh, plastic uh, that you sit on top of the kayak, and we have been using them uh, quite uh, actively to do our activities, but uh, that allows us to uh, go around the beach and uh, during the day only and uh, to be uh, very... Um, uh, vigilant, very, very alert to what the kids are doing with the kayaks because uh, they can very easily get in trouble. So uh, it, it, it tumbles uh, very easily. And so, well, you know that. 
And, and uh, we have been doing that uh, close to the beach. Uh, and uh, we take in contact with one teacher of the University of Valparaiso, and he taught us how to uh, make a, a, a small boat uh, made out of uh, plastic bottles and uh, plastic bags hmm. uh, that you can make it uh, as long as you want it. And so you can sit in there uh, eight, nine uh, kids and they can row on that boat. And that allowed us to make some other activities that are not possible. It's very stable. You wouldn't uh, believe it, but it's very stable. And uh, uh, we have been doing it, but uh, since uh, COVID came to uh, Chile in uh, 2019, uh, at the end of 2019, uh, we have been hit very uh, hard here at Valparaiso. Uh, at this time, at this moment, we are uh, ending our fourth week in a row uh, in conf confinement. And uh, we cannot leave our homes. Uh, we have to uh, ask for permissions to buy food and everything is very restricted. So we uh, put our scouting activities on, on, on a stop way. And uh, we are thinking two ways, two, two things that we have to solve before we can uh, go massive with our scouting activities, sea scouting activities. First, how to get a, a boat. We are finally decanting to build our own boat, to build our own boat as a, with a, 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 a lumber, with the... The, 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 the... Plywood, maybe? Huh? Plywood, maybe? Plywood, that's, mm -hmm. that's the key. The marine plywood uh, construction, it seems to be more accessible to us and cheaper to the, all the people here in Chile. $400 for us is a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, we have to uh, confine to the very low wages uh, uh, kind of a boat building activity. And the second thing we have to solve is how to get into the sea because you have to uh, comply with several rules. And uh, the best way we have found is to get in a, a combination with the fishermen uh, places. Th they do have the ability to give us permission to go into the sea and to control us. They have what is called in Spanish, alcaldes de mar, which is a, 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 a formal responsibility for giving permission to navigate and controlling the, the, road, the roads that you use when you navigate. And uh, it, it is also helping uh, to them to have some activities for their children. So we are uh, trying to do a, 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 a coordination with the fishermen caletas, that's the name that they have with their organizations, uh, so they can give us the permission to navigate when we have our boat and they, uh, we can uh, help them with the activities with their children in, in some way. Uh, and I want to thank especially to Ron Bird. We have not given up. We are tr still uh, trying to get our sea scouting activities. Ron Bird was very surprised that uh, Chile with such a long line coast uh, didn't have a uh, sea scouting at all in 2007. Uh, we should say that uh, we are, we, uh, are not, uh, uh, at that moment, we are having some uh, sea scouting activity, but it's very small. So, and we wanted to expand and to uh, became uh, important uh, scouting activity in the scouting movement of Chile. Okay, thank you very much. Garth, I don't think you had an opportunity to introduce yourself. You want to unmute yourself? There we go. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Garth Kloppenborg. I'm the Acting Regional Commissioner for uh, KwaZulu Natal in South Africa. Uh, KwaZulu Natal is one of the provinces. 
<laughs> Hello, Ronaldo. <laughs> um, one of the provinces in KZN, uh, sorry, one of the provinces in South Africa, and um, as the regional commissioner for many, for a, a good couple of years, I've also been involved uh, with land scouts all my life, and in recent times taken an interest in sea scouts. So I greet all of you as brothers and sisters of Sea Scouts, and uh, it's great to be on this platform. And I think this platform has opened up an opportunity for us to be able to meet again and meet at other times and discuss various items of common of common uh, interest. I think uh, COVID has done something for us in that, though that it has forced us into isolation, we've lost good friends in this whole process, but I think it's given us an opportunity to use these type of um, technologies that maybe we would have not have thought of in the past um, or even in the future. We would have thought this is somebody else's business, but it's given us an opportunity to make the world that much smaller and give us a chance that we are able to meet and and talk about things that are common to each other, but we are worlds apart. And it just brings us together a lot closer. So really, uh, Bruce, I'd encourage you to sort of carry on with this opportunity to meet on a more regular basis and share. Um, and exactly like uh, Julio has just expressed now on, on their experiences and their growth that they're trying to develop. Um, for us as Sea Scouting, we would like to develop our Sea Scouts that they get skills. And in developing those skills, it gets them to an opportunity when they go into the open world um, as young adults that look for a job opportunities, we've given them an opportunity to be able to enter into the blue economy and find their way for themselves in some maritime um, form of business or trade. And, and that's the skill development that we believe is important um, and that we give these youth, the youth the opportunity to um, get a step up in life and go into the world slightly prepared and better prepared than maybe others are um, when entering the industry. So, um, we would just encourage everybody sort of to, to keep to that. And uh, the rest of our colleagues, Magda and Ronaldo, and a few of us, we're on a training course. We've been doing that uh, uh, in the evenings on, uh, on uh, Moodle, uh, doing our training sessions. So we're really getting ready ourselves. And on the 8th and uh, 9th of uh, May, we'll be in training camp, learning how to row uh, gigs and uh, sailing the next day and just making sure that, we're getting our skills right so that when we take scouts out to sea uh, or into the, our large bodies of water, they uh, are safe. And we've got to make sure that we keep to safe scouting. So I greet everyone and thanks very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Garth. Uh, Dovila, do you, are you, I, I know that you've uh, texted in chat. Are you available to talk to us? Mm. Okay, uh, Alan Holmes, I don't think we've uh, heard from you. Hello. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Right, uh, I was a Sea Scout just over 50 years ago, and uh, immediately I left them. I got co-opted by our county organization as a member of our newly formed water activities team, and I've been there ever since. I'm currently their advisor and a technical assessor for dinghy sailing, power boating, keel boating, yachting, and windsurfing. And I, I'm currently trying to get our instructor team uh, reskilled because they've effectively had nearly two years not being on the water. So as soon as we get them up skilled, um, re familiarize themselves. We'll be getting back on the water with young people, hopefully within the next six or seven weeks. Um, Christmas time, I'll be going back to New Zealand again, uh, hopefully meeting up with Ron and down to uh, Picton for their three yearly regatta. And having heard about Swan about, I'd be interested in calling off on Perth on the way home and meeting up with the team down there. Yeah, it sounds like they have a wonderful uh, activity and, and uh, you would enjoy it. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Leslie, I don't think we've heard from you. Yeah, and thank you everyone and, and good morning to, to all the C-Scouts leaders. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't switch on my video because I think I was, I was put on, on video, uh, ah. video a while ago, yeah. But, let me, but let me thank see you for... Uh, give it a try okay. now. Let's see if yeah. that works. There you go. I there think we I'm go. Mm -hmm. so, um, thank you again, Bruce and to Ron for inviting me here for the scuttlebutt. And I'm here from the Philippines and we haven't started our ship yet, but it's very inspiring to see all your different activities and what you've done in your part of the world. And our, the, 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 the real um, aspiration for, for us to actually put up our own ship and join the likes of Jedi and JR here is that when the Philippines came as one of the top three countries in, in Asia to contribute to plastic waste, our, our CEO wanted to actually put something together in terms of educating the youth. And since our, our main core business is into seafarers, we wanted our seafarers to be the volunteers to actually teach our youth and, and to use their skills for this. And hopefully since we're, we're surrounded by bodies of water, we'll be able to be successful in putting up new ships this year. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Thank you, Leslie. Have I missed anyone? I think there may be one or two we haven't heard from. I think Jan, you haven't called on Jan. Well, Jan, Jan uh, spoke uh, as one of the presenters. Oh, yes, but, yes but, he will. He did speak, yes, but yes. he might want to say something else. <laughs> yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about you and, and what you do for Sea Scouts? Okay, sure. So uh, you heard from David, and David is, uh, I'm together with David in the Odysseus group when our tenure there has been longer than usual because we usually elect new members at LRC and we didn't have one and we aren't going to have one this year either so we're going to have a four-year <laughs> membership there and apart from the, the, that doesn't take most of my time in scouting though uh, I'm also a leader of a sea scout group in Prague I don't lead kids anymore but I just lead the uh, I, I guess you call it, okay, I don't know what you call it, but there are troops in this group, right? And yeah, apart from that, oh, we have the boats, we go on the rivers, we go uh, on the summer camps. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that, that's that. So that's what I do in East Coast. Thank you. Anybody else we haven't heard from? And I don't know whether Andrew Stevens. Ah, there. good morning um, from Auckland in New Zealand. Um, I'm a Sea Scout leader at one of our local groups, New Lynn. Um, our origins go back to about 1910. Um, we're a landlocked Sea Scout group. Um, which has meant that we've learned to be very mobile, um, traveling up and down the, the country to lots of different events, which um, means that the kids get a great deal of variety. Um, in New Zealand, the scouting branch is broken up into land, sea and air. And our group, along with many groups, we cross all the boundaries while we associate as being a, a sea scout group. Um, we do all the activities the land scout activities and the air scout activities as well. So it um, gives a great deal of variety and um, flexibility for the, the youth members. Um, at this point in time, our youth are looking forward to the National Scout Regatta this coming Christmas. Um, that will be a eight or nine day event in Picton over the Christmas New Year period where all the groups from across the country can come together and test their skills against each other. We're very fortunate in New Zealand that throughout the country, we all use the same class of boat, um, which means that we can have good competition, both locally, <coughs> regionally, and nationally. Um, very blessed to be in the Auckland region, um, where we've got about 25 
Sea Scout groups within the, the wider region, which allows for a lot of um, interaction on a weekly basis um, with um, local competitions and just um, playing out on the, the water uh, and blessed with a fantastic coastline, um, which gives us the opportunity for being out in the open water, um, in estuaries, rivers, and in inland lakes. So um, fantastic environment here for um, an outdoor adventure program. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else we missed? Okay. Um, bef before we uh, wrap this up, this has gone on a little longer than I expected, but uh, does this uh, sort of get together seem like something we might want to do again? Bruce, if I can speak. Please, go ahead, Ron. No, this is right, yeah. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for coming on board with all this. You did a wonderful job. What I didn't expect was so, so much in so short a time. But I would like to consider, all of you to consider some form of a get-together unofficially or officially. Uh, we haven't involved our national associations on place, so we don't cause any problems there. But I think we should try and do this once or twice a year. Would, would doing this maybe six months from now, uh, again, be uh, about the right amount of time? Okay. Um, I would be happy to have some help with this if you're interested. Uh, if we don't already have your contact information, please uh, make sure that you send it. Um, there will be two or three more files added to the downloads folder that aren't there yet, but they'll be there in a little while. And um, we'll, I, I, I will send out uh, an announcement to those whose names I have, uh, letting you know when they're available. So any other, uh, I, I do want to make one more comment before I stop talking. I want to thank Holly for all of her help with all of this. She's mm -hmm. been uh, a big help in getting this meeting together and uh, has really been very supportive. And uh, she has been a 40 plus year Sea Scout leader uh, and has really done a wonderful job supporting our, our program uh, in a lot of different ways. Any other final comment? Yeah. Well, I'll just make a final comment. I sort of now have a personal motto, which I like to say, which is that life is more fun with Sea Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was so cool to see all of you today. Really nice. All right. Well, thank you all. I think maybe what we ought to do is uh, call it uh, call it a day. And uh, I want to thank particularly our uh, friends uh, for whom this is the middle of the night for staying up and joining us. Uh, your contributions were very important, and we enjoyed hearing from you and getting to meet with you. <laughs>